Over the past 5 to 10 years, heavy metal has become infiltrated by a brand new genre tag, and that's been the one simply entitled Jet. This is a style of music that was based around a noise that was made off of a prior band and has been incorporated to an entire potential sub-sub-genre of heavy metal music. And it's been one that over the past 5 to 10 years has not only picked up steam and a lot of traction, but has also gained a lot of fan base and a number of bands that are trying to incorporate the gent sound into just about every other predetermined style of metal. Whether it be metalcore or mathcore, death metal, thrash metal, or progressive metal, there is a gent band that's trying to incorporate that noise or that sound into the music. It's almost like this music tag is meant to be everywhere and they're trying to take over. But not everybody has felt passionately and powerfully to the positive about gents. Not everybody is a gentleman or a gentle lady. No, instead they find gent to be a little bit ridiculous. They don't feel that it really necessitates or facilitates the genre tag and should be eliminated from heavy metal completely. Those people are haters. Couple haters in here. We're going to talk about them. Here are five reasons why people hate gent music. And this is a list that will, of course, start with number five. Number five is that it's just a bunch of sugar worship and done poorly. Now, yes, it is true that gent, at least the genre title, was largely influenced by a sound that was noticed in a lot of Meshuggah's music from the 1990s, going all the way back to one of their most popular and well-known albums, Destroyed, Erased, and Proof. However, this is something that developed into the full-scale genre, and bands such as Periphery, Tesseract, uh, Cloud Kicker, etc. were able to incorporate that noise into a different sound, whether it was combining it with a little bit of metalcore, combining it with a little bit of progressive, in order to give it a brand new home. And this was something that was just kind of kicked around as being called gent because of the noise that was made. However, like many things that start off as jokes and then end up becoming bigger than they actually were designed to be, it's something that transformed into a full-fledged genre movement where now bands were coming from far and wide to try to adapt the gent sound into their own previously you know, conceived noise. However, for a lot of people, they feel that this is nothing more than Meshuggah ripoff. This is something that's done poorly and only incorporated because a bunch of people thought that it sounded super neat and were going to try to take that sound and play it to death to the point where there was no other way for it to be played. Whether or not these people are correct is definitely in the ear of the beholder. However, there are many folks that simply will not even try out jet music any further considering they feel that they've heard the same sound over and over again and it's driving them mad. Number four, it's an unnecessary genre tag. This one is kind of weird for this series. We usually don't talk about the tags themselves, uh, but most people are thinking that Gent is just this sort of trend-setting, you know, joke style of genre tag that really has absolutely no place within the heavy metal construct. It's not something that should become part of the lore. And really, some of the bands within the movement themselves have even spoken out about how this has sort of gone too far, taken on a life of its own, and no longer really serves the relevance of the music they are attempting to play. If you take a listen to some of Periphery's newest material, it's definitely not something that assaults that uh, gent idea full scale. It's instead something that only uses it sparingly in order to incorporate further melody into their sound, and just, you know, because it's part of who they you know, started off as. It's something that also a band such as Tesseract has moved further and further away from in order to really create some spacious, you know, very luxurious sounding sonoscapes. And it was something that's also showcased by groups such as Sky Harbor, which really doesn't have the gent tag, but at times can showcase some gent formula. However, for many, this is an unnecessary genre tag that was birthed out of the internet and shat into the world, and it was given to all of us thanks to not only the metal media, but also by metalheads themselves trying to make a difference post the metalcore boom. Whatever the reason may be, this is a reason why if they take a look at anything that says gent on it, either that or anything that's recommended to them, and the word gent is used, they immediately want to stay away. Number three, most of the bands sound the same. You're going to get this with a lot of genres. Uh, this is something that will constantly be a negative opinion held by people that have no interest in really scanning them. They feel that most of the groups within that construct are not diverse enough, but the real stupidity of that statement is the fact that the way in which genres are built, the way in which they become legendary and become sounds that are attempted to be replicated or at least used to try to further heavy metal is based around a number of bands coming together at the right time and really perpetuating one simple noise 
that tries to dictate where heavy metal can potentially go in the future. You can see that or say that about thrash metal, black metal, extreme metal. You can talk to that, uh, talk about avant-garde metal even, even something that's as diverse as avant-garde that could literally span the entirety of the music universe can still come down to a lot of the bands sounding the same because the word people would use is weird. So with Gent, of course, a lot of the bands, whenever they first came out, did have a very similar timbre to them. It was something that all came together at the same time. It was thrust upon the world. And as the genres started to grow up a little bit was whenever we started to hear infusion of other things. Either that, or where the other things that, you know, were already there started to become a little bit more prominent. As these bands matured, they started to expand their sound a little bit. However, Whenever you have such a negative first impression where you feel that every band sounds the same, or at least at their root has the same idea, well, a lot of folks are just going to simply walk away. That's exactly what's happened in many cases, and sadly, they've missed out on some pretty cool records based around that. Number two, the music is derivative. There used to be a joke about a Muir tabs where everything was zeros and ones, but that's joke that's not really restricted to just Imbior or, you know, Limp Biscuit or any of the other bands that a lot of people hate. Yeah, it's one that's even become infused into jet music, considering one of the core notions of the sound is zeros and ones, very uh, very low-end style of, uh, of a very deep noise, something that is incorporated quite a bit in order to really give the genre its birthright. But this is music that also is really ignoring some of the other things that go on within the sound. By derivation, most folks feel very similarly to number three, that most of the bands sound the same, but the sound itself is what they're really criticizing as derivative, considering it's based around just that similar tone. It's something that's used within tracks, but not necessarily is the foundation of each and every song. Bands that do use that foundation for each and every song are typically going to be seen as not quite as good, considering they don't have enough expansion. You really can't make a lifestyle, or at least a genre, out of just one sound. So the bands that have been able to really maintain themselves have really tossed in other things into the mold in order to give it a little bit of further classification, not to mention a lot more variety. Again, we'll go back to the bands such as Tesseract, which started off a little bit more closely ground uh, and rooted to the Gent movement, but then with some albums were able to make spacey sonoscapes that sounded a little bit more like ambience was their, you know, principal property of choice. And based around that, Tesseract has still become and uh, is still seen as one of the more interesting bands within this mold, one that seems to be trying to transcend the Gent idea altogether. Periphery, though, even is able to uh, really attempt that, and some of the bands that are on the side are also trying to think of bigger and better things. Either way, there are many folks that simply see that simplistic noise as the core reason why they can't get into Gent, the core reason why these bands suck, and the core reason why they hate the whole entire idea. Which brings us to number one, it's metal snobbery. It's basically the fan base argument, only done in a different way. Unfortunately, much like prog snobs get some pretty bad rep, a lot of gent snobs get it as well. These are folks that feel that gent is the future of metal, gent is something that will really propel heavy metal into the next generation, and essentially you can really, you can really classify these guys as the same folks that said the same thing about metalcore, that say the same thing about bands like Avenged Sevenfold. Probably a very similar aspect was done whenever, you know, people heard thrash metal for the first time. Although at that point, heavy metal was still in its birthright, so it didn't really feel like snobbery. It just felt like folks that were passionate about a new genre. But that's what this really is. If you really want to reverse engineer that whole entire idea, there are a lot of people that are very passionate about Jet and passionate about how this sound is going to somehow influence the future of heavy metal music or just music in general. However, it's something that has become much like a lot of other things to the point of ridiculosity, to the point where the fan base themselves, some of them take it too far, believing that Gent is the only music that they can listen to, the only thing that's out there that's any good, and a lot of the metal that precedes it and a lot of the metal that's coming out alongside of it is completely inferior. Based around that notion, there is, of course, the opposite side. Those folks that take a look at this and find it to be absolutely atrocious, considering it's completely not true. Heavy metal is a genre right now that is exploding with a lot of creativity. And based around that, sure, there are a lot of projects that do have similar nomenclature, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's being facilitated or used in a bad way. All of the new bands that are out there all have a similar dream of sharing their song with the world and chose the heavy metal genre to do that. And based around that, Gent definitely has a place. 
However, the fan base wars will always be something that plagues genres of music and probably will always be something that plagues heavy metal music in general and will always have a, I guess, a spot on these lists, sadly, considering it's one of the largest fights that's out there related to jet music right now and also one of the reasons why some people will just stay away. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Five reasons why some folks don't want to be gentlemen and ge gentle ladies. That was harder to say than I thought. I just wanted to let you guys know I, uh, that I'm really, really grateful for all of you for watching the Five Reasons videos over this past year. This is the season finale of season one of Five Reasons. We will return next year and do this once again. I thank you for making it easily the most watched series on the channel. And I look forward to doing more of these for you in the future in 2017. Thanks once again. Leave your thoughts and comments uh, in the comments section below if you think that there was anything that was missed. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video, the season finale of Five Reasons. Watch the rest of the Five Reasons series in the playlist to your left. On the playlist to your right, uh, there's going to be a random recent video for you to scope out, so definitely do that as well. Once you do that, subscribe to the channel and scope out my Patreon. I'd appreciate it. My name's Cover Killer Nation. Thanks for watching this series in such, you know, large numbers. Have a good day.